and you were supposed to have gone through the list to see if you could find one of these reasons that you think could not be the reason something floats or sinks. And I gave, I mean, yeah, I gave you suggestion of how to do that. For example, air inside. If you could think of something that has air inside it and sinks, then that can't be the only reason things float or sink, right? Because everything that has air inside should sink. So somebody tell me, I should float, excuse me. Uh, somebody tell me one that you think is probably not the reason. Tyler. Size. So give me an example, Tyler. How do you, why do y'all think size isn't the reason? Well, no. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, hands down, we need to consider his idea first. Tyler's saying that if it's size, it should fit all the way across the board. He says he knows of big things that float and small things that sink. Can you think of an example like Tyler has? What's an example of something big and it floats? Campbell. Okay, yeah, we're pretty, yeah, I guess it depends on the person, right? Some people are bigger than others. Um, yeah, ask person, and then something small that sinks. Chase. A rock, yeah. So a rock. Um, what about like a cruise ship? Yeah, and that's really big. And then can't something small that sinks, a penny. Now, can you think of two things that have the same size? And one sinks and one floats. Talk to your neighbor about that for a second. Back with me, please. Eyes. <laughs> Can you think of two things that are the same size and one sinks and one floats? Lacey. Okay. So, so we know that this can't be the only reason, right? There's something else going on. What's another one you think might not be the only reason? <clears throat> Here we go, I'm getting a horse again. Um, Brooklyn. No, I tell me another one. Hollow. Okay, so tell, why do you think hollow can't be the only reason? So you're saying if it's big, it only has a little bit of hollow space in it, it would sink or float. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Okay. Uh, what about hollow? Can you think of an example where there's something hollow and it sinks? Katie. Uh, so maybe, yeah, we'd have to take it off and try it. Shayla? A cardboard box. Now, a cardboard box will float initially, but then once it gets saturated, once all the water sucks in, it might sink. Um, Chase. Papers hollow? So yeah, you need to be more descriptive. Like paper is like, kind of like cardboard would float float at first, but once it gets wet, it'll sink. Mahi. A metal. A metal. Okay, so like and a metal ball that's hollow inside. What do you all think? Would that float or sink? Ping pong ball is hollow. Does it float or sink? Float. Yeah, so I want something because most people, that's what they said. They said if it's hollow, it floats. So I want something that's hollow and sinks. Lacey. A mason jar. I think it floats. It gets closed up. Like a canning jar. So let's assume it's closed up. Yeah, I think it would float. We can try that. I've got, got one up here. Um, Alexis, a golf, ball. a golf ball. Golf balls aren't hollow inside. <coughs> Shaylin, that little, that little what? That little, that little glow. Yeah, it's hollow inside the very inner part inside the plastic there. Um, well, I'll tell you an example. I think of a lot when I think about this one. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen a safe yeah. before? So it's a big metal box. Let's suppose you had a safe with nothing inside. Would it float or sink? Yeah, it's hollow, but it sinks. Now, let's flip this around. Can you think of something that's not hollow and still floats? What's something that's not hollow and it still floats? 
Yesterday we started a list of the things we think could be at the cause of why things, some things are buoyant and others are not. What does that word buoyant mean or buoyancy? What does that mean, Mahi? Uh, like stuff that yes, whether or not something floats. Is it always in water? No. No, it's not always in water. So, um, but for our example, just to keep things simple, we're going to talk about things being buoyant in water. And we talked about some of these ideas and we had some good examples of why some of those weren't true or they weren't true. For example, what about hollow? What's an example? You know, one of them said, oh, if it's hollow inside, it floats. But we had a really strong example of something that is hollow and it sinks. Brooklyn. Yes, we used the set. The safe is a really good example. Square metal box, hollow inside. Does it float? No. no, it sinks, sinks like a rock. So uh, we talked about those yesterday, and I wanted to focus on the one that most people would say causes things to sink or float. What did we say yesterday that most people would say sinking and floating has to do with what, Brantley? What do you think most, well, some people might say, but what did we say yesterday that most people think it has something to do with, to try again? Yes, how heavy it is. Now, one of the problems we're going to run into this year is that it makes sense for us to think about weight makes things sink or float. Because you've got a lifetime full of experiences of seeing things that are heavy. Do what in water? Float. Most things heavy, though, what do they usually do? Sink. Sink. And you, we only can come up with a few examples of heavy things that floated. So we've got more examples to go along with heavy things sinking and light things floating. Okay, and we only have a few examples of heavy things that flow and light things that sink. Remember, we mentioned a penny. Uh, we talked about a battleship, a cruise ship. Those are heavy things to be if they float. So what I want to do next is I want us to really focus on this one. Let's blow this one out of the water. I want to do an activity that will prove that it's not the mass or weight that makes things sink or float. Listen carefully so you'll know what I expect you to do. What we're going to do is I'm going to let each of you pick an object that floats. Now, you'll have to make sure that it floats. In the back of the room, you can see I have a tank of water. It looks like it's dirty, but it's not. I'll tell you why it looks like that in just a few minutes. So you're going to pick an object that floats. Once you've found out for sure that it floats, you're going to come back and draw the object and label it, scientific illustration. And then when I call you, you're going to come and find the mass of your object. So the first phase is pick out something that floats, verify, find out for sure that it floats by testing it in the water tank back there, come back and draw it, label it, and then when I call you, you're going to find the mass. See if I have a question. Now, if you pick an object that doesn't float, you need to put it back and try something else. You are allowed to use some of my objects, but just like your things, I don't take your things off your desk or out of your stuff without asking you. If you want to use something of mine, ask me first, because some things will get damaged if they get wet. You may have something of yours that floats, okay? But make sure your object floats, and you'll come back and draw it, and then when I call you, you'll find the mass of your object. Okay, so the next step was to, after you found your object, make sure that it was, um, that it floated, and then you find the mass of your object, the next thing you're going to do is get some clay, and you need to get the clay to equal the amount of mass as your objects. So you might have to add clay to it or take clay away. Nod your head if you understand. What we're going to do now is we're going to put everybody's name on there, and we're going to put what their object was, the mass of their object, and whether or not the clay floated. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out. So we can look at the whole set of data. And Madison, I'll let you catch up in just a minute. And I know this is a little bit smaller. Let me see. Uh, I'm somewhere in between that. Okay. So we've got the whole set of data here. Every person, their objects, the mass of their objects, and I see a pattern here. Even if the mass was high, 
Or it could match with love. What happened when we put our play in? Yes, so people who come back and say, oh, things flow the same because of how much mass it is. If it doesn't have much mass, it's going to float. Or how much its weight is. If it doesn't weigh much, it'll float. All of these objects floated. But when we had clay with the exact same mass as our objects, what did the clay do? Yeah. It sank. Everybody sank. See if you can see on the list which of the people in our class who had the least amount of mass in their object. Look at the data. Whose object had the lowest mass? Kellen. Yeah, look at when well, Charlotte's had, she had a colored pencil. What was the mass of it, everybody? 2.5. Yes. So 2.5 grams. Here's Charlotte. 2.5 grams. Surely something that only has a mass of two and a half grams would float. So now we've got some evidence here. If somebody tries to come at us and say, oh, it's how low things are, that's why they float. We've got some proof that that's not true. Now, I told you yesterday not to shape your clay because that's what's coming up today. Today I'm going to give you back your clay, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to see if you can mess with the shape of your clay. See if you can get it to float. Now, when you mess with your clay, one thing you cannot do with your clay is change its mass. What would you have to do to change the mass of the clay? What would that involve? Campbell. Some yeah, if you tore some off, that would be removing mass. We want to keep the mass the same. Remember, we want everything to be the same about our clay except the shape. Uh, yeah, and you can take clay away. What else did you do that would change the mass? Add more clay. Yes, adding more clay. So we're not going to mess with the mass. We're going to keep the mass the same. Now, at, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call you back one at a time, let you test your clay once you've changed the shape of it, see if you can get it to float. 